This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're in need of a portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you'll need to create a stunning website and grow your brand. I'm turning fungi into fairies. Hey friends, and welcome back to that pile of leaves you saw in the woods that one time. Today I'm back to my usual shenanigans. I am turning nice pictures of fungi that I saw on Pinterest into characters. So these are the fungi that I chose to turn into characters wow. today. Side note, I'm using the word fungi in this video because first of all, alliteration, and second of all, because I'm not even sure what the species of these fungi actually are. One of them I know for a fact isn't even a real species. I'm taking some liberties here today because because I'm an artist and I'm allowed to. It is so hard to find the species information whenever someone just posts a picture to Pinterest. So those of you who know about mycology, feel free to school me in the comments below because I'm lazy and I deserve it. <laughs> Anyways, I have loads of different kinds of fungi, other mushroom fairies people have designed, some mycology charts, and then just some articles of clothing that I thought were cute. My general goal for today is just to focus on the images themselves for inspiration, but of course bring in some fairy-like elements, and because I am ye old historical clothing nerd, also bring in some historical inspiration as well. That is the reason for the gratuitous amount of 19th century fashion plates on this board, because I cannot help myself. Also, yes, I am Bridgerton trash. Go ahead, arrest me. First up is this picture, which I'm pretty sure is based on a recolored version of this fungi. Yes, I lied a little bit about not knowing the species. I did more research. Anyways, but I really like this picture. I saw people online call it a Barbie pagoda fungus, whatever that is, but it's just so cute and pastel. I saw other artists create characters based on it, so I figured I had to try as well. I mainly wanted to use the photo itself as a basis for the themes of the outfit and the color palette, so since this fungus looks really frilly and pink, I decided to indulge in my recent obsession for selkie dresses. A few days ago, I watched someone do a deconstruction analysis and a custom pattern of their selkie dresses, and now I want to make one. So I based the inspiration for the silhouette of this character's mushroom dress on these selkie styles. And if by any chance you saw a random photo of Edwina Sharma on my boards, then you'll know, yes, I am Brit Bridgerton trash. I just binge watched season two and Edwina was so cute that I wanted to take some inspiration from her character for this illustration as well. Mainly to use her as face reference, but I also wanted to take historical inspiration from the Regency period and the fantastical Regency core aesthetic that the show has created. So with the design of the dress, I'm trying to meld Regency core with the baby doll cut of a selkie dress and then basically use ruffles and layers of fabric to mimic the shape of the fungus in the picture. I was trying to think, okay, if you're a tiny fairy and you live in the woods, what do you wear? Plants and fungi, probably. So I kind of wanted these designs to look like the wearers literally repurpose mushrooms and flora to make their clothing. To accessorize a little bit and make her feel a little bit more like a fairy, I also gave her some pouches on her side that are loosely based on tie-on pockets that were popular in men and women's fashions throughout history, and reticules, which were the handbag of choice during the Regency era when the popular columnal silhouette didn't allow for pockets to be worn at the natural waist. I also gave her little fairy shoes and lacy elbow length gloves and matching socks. And for the gloves and socks, I tried to translate the shape language of mushrooms and plants into a lace pattern that would be fitting for this character. Especially pulling from the guild pattern on the side of the chanterelles in the reference picture. And you don't see it until later on, but I also followed that same lace pattern design language whenever I added patterns to her wings. I think a lacy moth winged look is just perfect for this character. It's so feminine and delicate. Delicate. Can you tell this is another indulgent video? <laughs> when it came to the colors, I wanted to stick as closely to the colors in the reference as possible, so I colored the dress with similar pastel pinks, purples, and blues, which complement her warm skin tone beautifully, and I used a similar gradient color scheme for her hair, which was a struggle. I couldn't really figure out what to do at first, but I actually really like how it came out. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go for more of a historical or modern influence with the hair, so I went for a sort of modern space bun look with literal chanterelles tucked in to accessorize, which I think ended up being a fun middle ground since wearing your hair up was such a thing in the Regency era. I also added those infamous ultra-modern side bangs. The inclusion of historical influence in these designs may seem a little strange, but through expanding my design language to include more grounded historical inspiration, it's helped me to freshen up my visual library a lot more and think of ideas I definitely wouldn't have thought of otherwise. I used to hate empire waist silhouettes, for example, because they weren't as modern and trendy, but now I'm far more 
more likely to style characters in a variety of silhouettes because I've grown to really like a lot of these styles through hearing about them in historical context. Anytime I can expand my design sensibilities, I think it helps to freshen up my work a lot. I feel like melding all of these seemingly disparate ideas really helps me to create something fairly new. So if you've never dove down the never ending rabbit hole that is historical clothing, I highly recommend it because it's both a fascinating and ridiculous subject. To finish up the piece, I really just added some fun forest details behind her, including the pink chanterelles she's inspired by, and tweaked the final illustration with some gradient maps. This was definitely a promising first design for our set of mushroom fairies. And by the end of this video, I'm hoping to have a few more character design candidates for my portfolio website, which was built using this video's sponsor, Squarespace. This year, I'm trying to learn how to be a better business person because I'm still really new to the marketing side of YouTube and being an illustrator, I still really don't know what I'm doing. Thankfully, Squarespace provides basically all of the business assets I could ever want. I'm primarily interested in showcasing my art as a portfolio and selling my artwork online, and Squarespace makes this incredibly simple even if you know nothing about website building, like me. They offer dozens of professional, customizable website and portfolio templates tailored for the needs of artists, bloggers, and merchants. Whenever I was building my portfolio website and online store, I literally just chose a template that I liked and then tweaked all of the customization until I was satisfied, and this all took probably under an hour thanks to handy features like automatic image scaling, which helped all of my portfolio pieces to look beautifully arranged as soon as I uploaded them, and thanks to Squarespace's high compatibility, which allowed me to link my print-on-demand service directly to my Squarespace store. Squarespace also offers high compatibility with your social media accounts so that you can display social media posts on your website or automatically post website content to all of your social media channels, which is really something that I should start using considering I haven't posted on Instagram in like a month. I've said it before, but I really want to start selling in person at conventions this year, which Squarespace is also great for because when you sell in person using Squarespace, your inventory and sales data are automatically kept in sync with your online store. If any of you lovely folks want to build a website and begin your passion project this year, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash prickly alpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Much love to Squarespace for returning to sponsor this pile of leaves. Now let's get back to it. Next, we're on to this mushroom, which after doing some digging, I discovered is probably an Omphalidus oleorius, otherwise known as the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. Again, with this one, I wanted to stick close to the image itself for the character's clothing, colors, and shapes. And this one just gave me major dapper Victorian boy vibes for some reason. So that's the look I decided to roll with alongside some dark academia influence, which I think is a healthy thing because I rarely draw male presenting characters and I definitely need practice. I don't know why, but I imagine this character to be like a delivery boy type fairy almost, foraging for various raw materials to bring to other fairy merchants. I don't know where my brain got that, but sometimes you just get a vibe. Also, he's a male presenting character and a male presenting character. Haha. <laughs> get it? Wow, I'm so funny. <laughs> so for this, I took a lot of inspiration from all of the different men's fashion plates I pinned. The main component of his ensemble is definitely his tailcoat, which I styled to be an amalgamation of various tailcoats that I liked, but it generally borrows its cut from early 19th century tailcoats, primarily those from the 1820s, albeit with a more modern influence on the collar. To bring in the fungi theme, I tried to mimic the shape of the jack-o'-lantern mushroom with the top and bottom of the sleeves and gave it some gathering details to resemble the mushroom gills. I also added a few shelf fungi growing off the tails as well because my design sensibility is really just people wearing nature as clothing. To add to the whole delivery boy look, I also added a newsy cap to match the coat that also resembles the jack-o'-lantern mushroom gills, and also an orange and yellow knit scarf to match that. I completed the look with some gathered breeches similar to the mushroom detailing on the coat and hat alongside some fantasy nonsense boots, and my lazy rendition of a cravat because I also gave him thick sideburns for Regency core reasons. I don't know why, but men and cravats looks both like really ridiculous and also kind of hot. I, I don't know how to feel about it. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Since a delivery person needs to be able to carry their spoils, I also gave him a lovely brown satchel and a holster for potions and various tinctures. Omphalidus oleorius is notably poisonous, so maybe he also does business with some unsavory types and delivers some dangerous substances. Maybe he's a little sketchy, who knows? Not me, because it's too late for my brain to do any writing right now, so use your imaginations. When it came to the wings, this is breaking the rules a little bit, but I based the shape and 
pattern in the wings on a different fungus because I saw it and thought it would be perfect for fairy wings. So enter the turkey tail mushroom. I think the earth tones and patterns offered a nice inspiration for a more masculine set of fairy wings. I have to say, I really love how these came out. And speaking of earth tones, I kept the color palette very close to the original image with most of his palette being creams and browns with bold accents of orange and yellow in his coat, scarf and hat. But of course, with the wings being more inspired by the turkey tail mushroom. Once again, to finish the illustration, I added a simple forest background and a final subtle gradient map to unify it with the other pieces. You might think it's kind of weird to be adding a background to something that is essentially supposed to be a character design, but again, I'm trying to get practice at different things this year, especially backgrounds. And I also did these on my iPad, so I'm trying to get practice with basically everything on that because these are probably the closest things that I have done to finished work on my iPad so far. So, um, there's still a learning curve here. Hi, hello, it's your friendly neighborhood pile of leaves here to tell you on what I decided on for the names for our Four Elements girls. For our fire and water goddesses, I decided to go with suggestions from Roman Patrick, Syra for fire, and Anahita for water. I don't know if I'm pronouncing those correctly, but I'm trying. For air, this might seem like a weird choice, but given her ballet inspiration, I went with Odette, which was suggested by Aja Leaf Hall. Again, I'm probably saying that wrong. I am so sorry. And finally, for earth, I went with Ceres, which was suggested by Ellie Rollins as a reference to the Greek god of the harvest. Thank you all so much for sending in names. Remember to send in names for these characters as well. Okay, back to more fairies. Bye. Now we're on to our third and final piece, which is based off of this image, which is a fungus I unfortunately couldn't find much about, but it has cool shapes and nice colors, so I wanted to give it a shot anyways. Again, if you guys know anything about mycology and you can tell me what this even is, let me know in the comments. I had a lot less direction with this one. I kind of just went where my mind took me and tried to have fun with it. And I somehow arrived at this really strange organic silhouette, again, really high-waisted. And the main garment ended up resembling a strange overall shorts slash dress situation. I've got to say, I don't love it, but I do kind of love how close to the original shape of the fungi I was able to get. So in the context of fairies who maybe use flora in their environment as clothes, I think it works decently well. I think the thing that was throwing me off in hindsight was the hardware I ended up adding to the overalls. I probably should have gone for a more natural aesthetic because I think the zipper and belt clash a bit with the shapes I'm using and just look too modern. At least in terms of a fairy society that like lives in the forest and tries to make clothing out of things that are around them. Like I'm not saying that fairies can't mine ore and make metal. I'm just saying that the, the zipper situation is a little bit strange. I feel like the buckle at least is maybe okay, but the, no zippers. And maybe instead of the overall connecty things, wow, that's not what it's called. Maybe they could tie on instead to make it feel a little bit more realistic. I don't know. My gosh, huge tangent, but I think maybe a belt like this would have been more fitting and given her more of a 1940s aesthetic to pull some more historical inspiration. But these are the little fun things you learn whenever you do experimental character designs like this. Not every one of them is going to be a gem and sometimes it's just fun to play around with an idea and even critique it and improve on it afterwards after it has marinated for a little bit. I definitely tried to put an emphasis on shapes with this one, which definitely shows in how I ended up styling her hair. The shapes I used for her face and hair are definitely some of my favorite parts of this illustration. The hairstyle kind of looks like a vintage brush out, but still completely looks like the fungi that inspired her, which I thought was fun. And because I'm still on my cottage core nonsense, I also added little branches and eventually a bow to her hair because I just thought it would be cute. It definitely looks pretty busy, but I kind of like it okay. I think it adds to like a youthful aesthetic, you know, like whenever you were 14 and you didn't know how to dress yourself. I sure didn't. So to complete this youthful summary look, I also decided she needed a picnic basket, which I filled with other mushrooms. And for footwear, I added some lacy socks and some floral inspired ballet flats. I don't know why I imagined all of these characters would be foraging, but I just feel like fairies they live off the land, dude. I also think that giving them a thematic through line also helped the characters to feel unified as well. And the other thing I tried to unify them with was color. I actually love how the colors came out in this piece. Again, I pulled most of my inspiration straight from the photo and went for a bold red and orange theme with hints of white and blue. Blue ended up being the unifying color across all three pieces. The chanterelle girl had blue in her dress and the jack-o'-lantern boy had subtle hints of blue in his wings. So I decided to make blue the main accent color for this character. 
picture. I added pops of blue to her eyes, the lining of the picnic basket, and of course the wings. To continue the youthful look, I decided to style her wings off of a blue monarch butterfly, which I don't think is a real thing, but it looked cool. And I actually really liked this choice. It definitely makes her character feel younger and helps to balance out how much red and orange I used in her design. To finish up the illustration, same as the others, I just added a simple forest background, this time adding some classic red spotted mushrooms and waterfall, and completed the piece by tweaking the colors with some gradient maps. And here are the finished design slash illustrations. I definitely had a lot of fun working on these, even though I clearly put a little less thought into these than usual. I've honestly been going through some art block and burnout, so when that's happening, even if the designs aren't perfect, sometimes I find it helpful to just draw something weird and fun and see where my imagination takes me. In some ways, I feel like gone are the days when I would just sit down and draw whatever the crap I wanted after school and then post it to DeviantArt and be like, look, art. Things feel so planned out these days. Which, planning is great, but there is some fun freedom and just doing whatever the heck you want. So let me know what you think. You dudes always have the coolest tweaks and ideas in mind that really help to elevate my design, so I would love to hear your thoughts if you have them. And as always, let me know what you think I should name these characters. I will be choosing the names for these characters in my next random character design video. Howdy, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure today. I truly enjoy turning random things, especially whimsical random things, into characters. So if you like this kind of content, there will for sure be more of it. I appreciate you watching till the end. Your support means a lot. And if you would like to support me even more, you can do the YouTube things. You can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. When you do, it makes me so overwhelmingly happy that I buy a new plant and name it after you. That is all for this week, my dudes. I know I keep promising sewing content. That is coming. I just had a little bit of a crisis of uh, motivation this past week. Patterning stuff like that entirely on my own is just honestly kind of a chore. But I'm hoping maybe next week there's gonna be some whimsical sewing content. So stick around for that if you would like to. Until then, thank you so much for watching till the very end. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and perform photosynthesis.